It's 6.43. We're back with you on Morning Barbados. It's Tuesday morning. Thank you for staying with us so far. We're continuing. This month is a focus on crime prevention, so we're going to do our best to talk to the people who know best about that. Our next guests, as we focus on Crime Awareness Month, uh, the theme, of course, violence in our society from prevention to treatment, we have Cheryl Willoughby. She's the director of the National Task Force on Crime. And we also have Modupe Shodei with us. She's a consultant. Ladies, good morning and welcome morning. to the show. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you. All right. Well, that's a, a lot to cover and deal with. Um, we all have concerns about some of the things that are taking place in our society, which would seem to be on the increase. But putting things in perspective for what your plans are for the month, uh, maybe you can give us the, the overview. Well, this month we do not want to focus on the factor, factors that would cause crime mm -hmm. because we already know what we are dealing with in terms of delinquency and violence within our schools, within our society. And so this month our emphasis is really on the solutions to the problem. Okay. So we want the month to be solution focused where we are trying to sensitize persons within business places, family members, etc., to the nature of crime as well as to meet with our uh, stakeholders to look for for solutions to the problem. Mm -hmm. So this month we are really focusing on treatment and prevention of violence, not only within society, but in general we want to also get into the minds of people to determine what we can do to assist them to eradicate or even to reduce the level of violence within our society. So that's what the month is really all about. Well, I, like, I was wondering when you said about treatment and if you were planning to embark on trying to get the deviant behavior to stop. But this is, that is not what you're looking for. You're looking at trying to sensitize people on how they can perhaps, as you were mm -hmm. talking before, mm -hmm. not be victims or at stay least safe. stay safe. Exactly. Is that it? Exactly. That's exactly what we're hoping to do. As the director mentioned, we know what the issues are. So how can you help yourself? Mm -hmm. It's all about empowerment. So that's basically what we'll be looking at this month. And how are you going to go about um, giving people tools for empowerment? What are some of the things that you're going to do? Well, we have several activities mm -hmm. planned for the month. We start with brass stacks. We'll have the director and another staff member on Friday. They'll be thrashing out, thrashing out the issues with the public on brass stacks. Um, on Sunday, we have the official launch with our church service at the Holy Trinity Anglican Church in St. Philip. That starts at 8.45 a.m. And Crime Awareness Month, we try to engage everybody. So we also have a number of community outreach interventions going on. We have that on the 14th, the 21st, and the 28th. So those Fridays, we'll be going into the communities of Haynesville, Deacons, and we'll also be joining the Oysters Friday party on the 28th. And we have, you know, a lot of guests that are going to be joining us. We have persons that are going to, yes, talk to you about crime prevention, but we're going to keep it interesting. So we have persons, we have Red Plastic Bag, we have Matt Fingal, we're having persons that are going to keep it, you know, interesting and engage the public. We want to hear what you think, what, you, you, what you've been doing, what you may need help with, things like that. And we also have what is going to culminate our month of activities, a national consultation on the 26th and 27th of October, where we gather with our stakeholders. Again, we are going to be solution focused. So how can we arrest these behaviors that are going on in our schools, in our communities, and in society as a whole? So those are some of the things that we have going on for the month of October. Can we get back to that national consultation and see what, we, what will be the, uh, who will be participating and those sort of things. But Madam Director, do you get a sense that uh, people see crime as seasonal, you know, coming around certain festivals or events, Christmas time, people start saying, you know, guard your belongings mm -hmm. closely, be aware. But then after that, people just go back to being like, okay, it's cool. Do you see that or do you get a sense that they're becoming more aware generally on a day-to-day -day basis? Well, at our department, we are primarily researchers, criminologists, researchers. We research the extent and nature of crime in Barbados, as well as we look to international and regional research to give us some answers as to what is going on. And research will show that crimes at time um, are committed at specific times, especially around a time like crop over or at Christmas time, you would find that there is an uh, um, a surge in acquisitory crime because people are trying to acquire 
things in order to go out and party and, and so on. And so you will find also you have a lot of property crime where people target your homes for gold and maybe valuable things that they can offload on the, on the black market in Barbados. So research shows that, yes, around certain specific times you have an, a, a surge in crime. But in general, we, we, we are finding that the nature of crime in Barbados is changing based on our research. We are finding that there's a, a, an increase in um, violent crime, gun-related crimes. As we all know, the drug situation is a problem not only in Barbados but across the region. And uh, as a result of that, you are going to have crime, the face of crime changing mm -hmm. because with drugs, you would find that uh, you have violence because people obviously have to protect the turf. And you were mentioning to me uh, that there are a number of things on the calendar that you have not yet mentioned that you would like the public to be aware of. Yes, there are. On the 15th, mm -hmm. also we'll be collaborating with the Ministry of Social Care. They mm -hmm. also are celebrating the International Day for the Eradication of Poverty. So that will be in Queen's Park. I mm -hmm. believe it's 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. So the National Task Force on Crime Prevention will be collaborating with them to also engage in community outreach because we understand that the crime prevention fight is not just about one department or True. one agency. It's all about partnerships. So we'll be having a partnership with them. And also, last December, we would have had our first crime awareness debate where we had Harrison College and St. Michael as the finalists. St. Michael were the winners. And I just want the students to know that they'll have the opportunity to view that debate on Yes, on the 16th of October. So it will be broadcast on CBC TV 8 at 7.35 p.m. For those who would be watching it, the topic that was debated on that day was corporal punishment is necessary for maintaining discipline in Barbados' schools and should not be abolished from the school system. It was an excellent debate and I'm happy that the public is going to get a chance to view it. I'm sure that would have brought out a lot of passionate views. It did, it did, it did. You mentioned uh, earlier about the face of crime and you were talking more specifically about the methods, the, the way or the type of crimes that are mm -hmm. being committed now. Um, from a cursory glance through the newspaper, I, I, I kind of see for myself what I think to be a changing face in crime and that I seem to be older people. Is that what your findings are showing too? Or is just not no, um, our research shows that crime is prim primarily committed by younger piece of people between the age of 20 and 25, as well as the victims of crime are normally um, around that age group. Theories would also speak to this. Um, the Per different th theories would tell you that persons who associate in certain locations and persons who have certain lifestyles are mm. more vulnerable to being victims of crime is the lifestyle exposure th theory which promotes that and it indicates that persons who find themselves around nightclubs and walk in the streets late at night and associating with certain big behaviors are more at risk to become victims of crime and I'm sure that this is something that the other persons who are speaking to crime prevention would also allude to and as a result you would find that governments across the world would base their crime prevention methods on these theories because they believe that if persons change their behaviors and their lifestyles then the the, the possibility of being a victim of crime would be significantly reduced. It's about creating hard targets, making yourself not a soft, soft target for crime, and also protecting your home. All these um, various crime prevention methods that you will hear discussed today, because I, I see your focus is on crime prevention, which mm -hmm. is good. It is all based on the, these theories that would have been put forward by the various criminologists that if you have a certain lifestyle or if you adopt certain measures, then you make yourself um, hard targets, um, soft targets for crime. Now speaking about target, this group, this uh, group between the ages that you mentioned, mm -hmm. is this an easy group to target or because, you know, this, it sounds to me that these are people who are going to say, you know what, I'm going on and do my thing. Is this an easy group mm -hmm. or do they actually come out to, to events and listen to what is being said? 
Fine. You're right in that it's not an easy group because we don't have them in the control setting, say, of the school. Mm -hmm. So then it's a matter of going out into the communities. As I said, doing things like community outreach is a matter of public education. And yes, often you do find persons, you know, coming out because despite what, you know, persons think there are a lot of persons in society who want to see crime curbed and who want Barbados to remain a safe society. So they, they, do, they do come out. Okay. They do. But even if we look at this, this particular age group, and, and I mentioned to you that if you do a, a survey of those persons who are incarcerated, you will find that most of them fit into this, this, this age group. And what is going on right now within the criminal justice system is that those persons are being targeted uh, through rehabilitation. And so what um, is also being done is that the aftercare of persons who are incarcerated is now one of the focus of our, our, our um, government and our, and our department and, and the probation department. So that persons who are released from prison now, you will find that there's more follow-up care and those persons are now being redirected into positive activities which would have started from when they were actually incarcerated. Is it safe to say then that with that pattern, um, recidivism should be on the reducing Right. So well, we are hopeful. We are hopeful because <laughs> you would know that research shows that with recidivism, it's an issue, and it's an issue primarily because persons who would have started committing crime have not been really rehabilitated as they should have been. And so we are hoping with improved and intensive in, uh, rehabilitation programs within our prisons and even after you've re been released from prison, that we will see that recidivism rate slowly reduce. So you're not going to see it overnight because with prevention it takes time. So we are hoping that over time we will see that recidivism rate reduce significantly. And quickly, in, in about a minute that we have, is it too early to, for the research on the economic situation and how it has, has impacted crime? Is it oh. any, any information on that yet? Uh, research in that area would call for an economist on board. And to date, we have not done the economic cost of crime as yet. But we are hopeful that we can look at the economic cost of crime because it is wide, it is it is expansive because you have to look at not only the cost to to government in terms of hiring police officers and prison officers, but you also have to look at treatment, the, the, the cost it takes to treat someone who is injured and the type of resources that are required. So it's not a very easy research piece to do. And so it will call for a lot of persons, resource persons being um, brought course. together. I wasn't trying to add to your workload. But <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you all very much uh, for dropping by. It's Crime Awareness Month, and we've been speaking with uh, Chara Willoughby, the Director of the National Task Force on Crime, uh, and Madupe Sudei. She's a consultant, and it begins with a church service on Sunday, so make sure and be a part of all the